So I grew up in a small fishing and farming community in New England, in Rhode Island. And from the time I was a little girl, ever since I can remember, I wanted to work in and on the water. And I think I was probably about five years old when I decided that what I wanted to do was be a marine biologist. And so I spent much of my childhood and much of my early academic career through high school and through my undergraduate study, um, picking up you know, as many classes as I could in the sciences and working just about every job that I could in the marine field. So habitat restoration and working in fisheries and um, all sorts of great stuff. And when I was 21 years old, I moved to Alaska to work in the fisheries there to work aboard commercial fishing vessels. And this is me fishing in the Gulf of Alaska with um, one of my favorite crews out there. And it was my time in Alaska that really kind of solidified for me the fact that what I wanted to do was work in fisheries. And so a few years later, I arrived here in Santa Barbara and attended the Bren School at UCSB, which many of you may know. Um, and my whole objective was to find innovative solutions to the biggest problems facing our global oceans. And lucky for me, I found this girl um, on the first day of school, my business partner, Laura Johnson, who was also a really big fish nerd and was as interested in the global oceans and our global fisheries as I was. Um, she was older, of course, when I met her. Um, and come to find out, Laura had also worked aboard commercial fishing vessels in Alaska, although her photos on the bottom look much more badass than mine on the top. So um, we really came together over this shared love of fisheries and the ocean. And, um, you know, at the Bren School, we got to work um, thinking about sustainability and traceability and what that means for the seafood industry. And we were so surprised to find that one third of all seafood sold in the United States is mislabeled, meaning that it's not being sold as what it actually is. And Laura and I had all this experience working in these great fisheries, working with fishermen, and we knew it was about addressing not just sustainability, but also traceability. So our master's degree took us to the Galapagos Islands of Ecuador, studying the lobster fishery there. And it was here while we were working with the local community and NGOs on the ground in the lobster fishery, trying to find innovative solutions to, um, to the problems facing their fishery, that we really had this aha moment when one of our NGO partners came to us and said, what we really need is a business to partner with that can help us incentivize fishermen to change their practices and actually drive sustainability. So that was really how our company, Salty Girl Seafood, was born. We came back to UCSB and we competed in the new venture competition and we won a bunch of prizes and a little bit of seed money and that's really what launched us into the first summer of our business, uh, fresh out of graduate school. And we set out across California talking to fishermen all up and down the California coast and all throughout, all throughout the country. Um, here's Jeremiah O'Brien in Morro Bay, if anyone knows Jeremiah. Um, and we just set out to learn as much as we could from the fishermen, you know, what kind of business model is, is best suited to driving the kind of change that we wanted to see. Um, so the business model that we had developed was connecting fishermen with chefs. So fishermen like uh, Santa Barbara fisherman here, Paul Teal, who are doing great work on the water every day and who have these incredible success stories, stories of positivity to bring to the consumer about the good work that American fishermen are doing. So Salty Girl began as a labor of love. Um, anyone in the room who has started a business knows that emphasis is on labor. Um, this is Laura and I in the back of my pickup truck delivering some of our first fish straight from the dock um, to one of our chefs, Luca Crestinelli at SY Kitchen, if you guys have been up there. Um, and we found that our chefs were loving the traceability, loving these stories about the fishermen loving that connectivity, but we really felt like as a team, we had more to give. We had more to give these stories and we wanted to reach a much broader audience. So after about a year of business, we pivoted. We changed business models, completely changing the direction of the company and developed this innovative product, um, bringing sustainable, traceable seafood to the masses via this retail product. 
which is flash frozen and pre-marinated and sold in grocery stores now throughout the country. And on every package of Salty Girl Seafood, you can actually see where and how your fish was caught. And then you can go online and type in a unique code and see how, um, and you can see the fishermen and the vessel and all sorts of interesting information about really where your fish came from, which is super important. So in the very beginning of 2016, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so I'm not sure if that's for Whole Foods or for us. Um, so in the very beginning of this year, we had great news. Um, Whole Foods was going to roll us out across their entire Northern California region. And as you can imagine, that's a big change. Um, since that time, we have rolled out into about 20 additional stores on a monthly basis. We're sold in almost 200 stores to date. We have distribution up and down the West Coast and up and down the East Coast. We've had recognition from Nat Geo, Science Magazine, um, Forbes, NPR. We were recently in Inc. Um, in November of last year, we won an international sustainable seafood competition called Fish 2.0 that really solidified the work that we're doing to really drive change in the seafood industry. And we have... Um, you know, big companies like Trident Seafood coming to Little Salty Girl Seafood to say, how are you doing that? You know, how, how are you communicating this to, to the, the public? And how are you, you know, how can we be more like Salty Girl Seafood? So um, that's us. That's our story. There's more to come. Um, stay tuned. But thanks so much for, for listening.